Stanford University. This year is a unique year because the class did so well, we thought that we could uh, go to a flight facility that NASA owns in the desert of California and try to set the world altitude record with these vehicles. We've been trying to minimize the weight as much as possible uh, and at the same time being able to lift the, all the components we had to carry with us, so the GPS board, the controller, and all the electronic stuff. The plane can decide, given the altitude, we can decide if we should be climbing or descending. Uh, so when we're doing the testing outside, if we reach some altitude that is below some threshold, then we start climbing again. Yes. 1,400 meters? Yes, absolutely. The highest this plane has been to? Yeah. It's climbing really well. We did four flights. I think the first one were, was a very, very short flight. Uh, basically crashed into the concrete. Uh-oh. Crash. Luckily, no one was hurt, but uh, that was the good thing about having redundancy. We were able to switch to a second plane right away. Uh, that one did very well, climbed nicely. So we established a, a pretty reasonable record around, I think, a little over 7,000 feet, uh, which is pretty impressive for an electrically powered model airplane, basically. But based on our previous testing, we know we can do much better. Changes? Oh, new world new record! New yeah. 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 <laughs> lost time. A lot of the UAVs that are flown by NASA and are flown by uh, the Air Force, they're really big, they're multi-million dollar projects. Whereas these aircraft that we've built are done by graduate students who most of which have never built an airplane before. And we did it in 10 weeks. There are a lot of different applications. One of the biggest, in my opinion, is sort of science missions. This could be anything like agriculture monitoring, traffic monitoring, helping find and locate uh, fires and helping firefighters fight those. If you can now have a cheap way to get a lot of different data and now 500 or 1,000 feet, um, you could start getting a lot more atmospheric data, you could get pollution data. We see a lot of value on small UAVs in the near future doing a large number of different missions. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.